Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I hope you don't mind, but uh, one of my dogs, Wicket, is going to be joining me. He seems to have crashed on my lap. And uh, we were talking earlier, he and I, about uh, DLL files. And about three people in the chat room earlier today and yesterday were asking the same kind of question. And uh, so I thought, well, let's take the time and, and answer the question about DLL. Uh, stands for Dynamic Link Library. Now, there are programs on your computer, and they're usually .exe files or executable files. And some programmers and developers, instead of packing the full functionality inside the exe files, uh, if you will, outsource certain functions to DLL files that are separate from the exe files. Now, you don't need a DLL file to run an exe file. They're, inter uh, they're interchangeable in the sense that uh, the DLL requires a call by an exe to run, whereas an exe can just run on its own. But a DLL file, dynamic link library file, can extend the functionality of an EXE. Or in some cases, uh, what will happen is there will be a developer out there, a programmer, and say, say he wants to do something with his program, but he doesn't know how to do it. Well, there may be a, another programmer out there who's created a DLL that other programmers can use to enhance their EXEs. So instead of the programmer wants to make a program on his own, spending all that time reinventing the wheel, he could use someone else's code and then in his EXE call upon that DLL and take uh, the advantage that the DLL has built inside of itself uh, within his program. So they're interlinked in that sense. Uh, now do you, do you want to have DLL files? Well, in some cases you may have no choice. If the developer, the programmer, has created a program that's reliant on these DLL files, then yes, those DLLs need to be present. Nine times out of ten, when you install the program, it'll install all the DLL files and all the libraries that you would need to run that particular program. And there are some cases when you just copy the EXE file, just the program itself, over to another computer, it won't work. It'll say, uh, can't find uh, this thing, where is it at? And you're going, well, I thought I just copied over the program. Program. Well, that's fine. You, you copy the executable part, but if it's making calls to other files that it's reliant on uh, and they're not installed in your system, or let's say um, they're installed in a certain part of your system that the exe is looking for specifically in a certain directory, that would be uh, the hallmark of a, a bad programmer. But these things do happen. Uh, the, the hope is, is that developers and programmers uh, make a program that is reliant on a DLL file, and if the DLL isn't there, can fall back on something that's uh, usable, certainly, uh, at some core level, or at least not giving you an error saying, I can't run at all because I need this DLL file or this e external file. And then in some cases, there's no way of working around that. For the most part, uh, people run into DLL hell about as much as they did way back in the day. It's probably worse, but our hard drives have gotten so big that a lot of uh, of the file cleanup, the regular file cleanup that we used to do religiously, uh, we really, well, at least I really don't do m that much anymore because what's the point? If I've got one DLL file, you know, that's sitting inside of my Windows folder or directory, then in theory, any program that would call on that DLL file would be able to find it with relative ease. Uh, I haven't gone through my system and swept for duplicate DLLs because some programs are made so that the DLL has to be in that actual directory. And, and then in some cases, you may have the same DLL file, same version, same file size, same everything in 15 different places on your hard drive. Uh, do you need that? Mm, well, you know, if you really want to free up the disk space, that might be one way to clear it, but be careful because, as I said, if the developer is not a very intelligent developer, they will put in hard-coded paths that may not correspond with the way that you're using your system or the way that you change your system. I'm not going to... I'm not going to write it up to a sloppy developer necessarily, but I will say that certain programs have handled it certainly more elegantly than others. Uh, Max, uh, in, in OS X, they really don't have DLL files. They handle programs and the associated files with them in a different capacity, and I think a much cleaner capacity. When I want to get rid of a program, for the most part, I just delete the actual program icon, and for the most part, it is gone. There are some preferences that might be left around, but that's where I use a program called app zapper on the Mac and unfortunately there's no equivalent on Windows certainly no equivalent uh, 
Um, and that's the reason why way back when we'd have to reinstall Windows very often because you'd install all these programs with DLL files all over the place. It was just a mess because every programmer and developer has a different idea about how they think their program should work and how it would work best. But the problem is, is if you install a program from one developer over here and a program from another developer over here and they clash and one uses uh, the same DLL file but it's a different version, then you end up with conflicts and it becomes DLL hell. Uh, is there a way out? Nah, not so much. Uh, as unfortunately, Microsoft really hasn't done much to clean up the problem of DLL hell, but be aware that it does exist, and DLLs are kind of a, a necessary part of operating inside the Windows environment. Um, they are executable files in and of themselves, but they can't be executed upon directly. You can't double-click a DLL file and have something run. It's got to be called upon uh, by an external program, and then it will do what it's supposed to do in conjunction with that program. So I realize that uh, that is a long answer to a pretty simple question, but a lot of people have asked about DLL files, and instead of doing five videos, I thought I'd do a, uh, just one rather, hopefully, not too lengthy one, but... Uh, um, that's the easiest way I can explain DLL, and Steiny says that uh, I did it pretty well. So, okay, I did it well. I will end it there. Now, if you have any suggestions or solutions for how you keep DLL hell from infesting your computer, uh, make some suggestions. I really haven't looked at many programs to help clean up duplicate files in such a long time because I said disk space is kind of a commodity these days. It's not as expensive uh, or as precious as it once was. Um, or, you know, if you've got any other programs that might help people manage the various DLLs on their system, if not strip out the duplicates, you know, looking for any kind of suggestions. I'm sure you've been hit with DLL hell, and we've all been there, but uh, anyway, uh, I'll put the video as a close now. If you have any other questions, uh, by all means, you know, stop by the chat room. I say this at the end of every video, because I don't know if this is the only video you've seen, or if this is probably the 74th video that you may have seen. But regardless, we're always there live at live.perillo.com. See you later.